Well, thanks so much for joining us, Representative Hart. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me to join you this morning. And I should tell our listeners that the, the reason that I brought you on, that I, that I had you on, is to talk about how people can get mortgage assistance and rental assistance f- f- during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a really serious issue. And I promise my listeners that next week we're going to, I'm going to bring you audio about that, how you can get help from, for COVID-19 relief for homeowners and, uh, and rental assistance. Representative Hart has been on the forefront of that, and she has a lot of great information that I will share with you next Tuesday. But since I have you booked for the show, and since this is such a major news story that's happened, what is your reaction to what we heard in Politico that the U.S. Supreme Court seems appears ready to overturn Roe versus Wade? To be perfectly honest, I was devastated. You know, I believe that this leak is probably as important or more important than all of this landmark legislation that our states are pushing to ban abortions. I'm just... So now we get a a peep into what they're really kind of thinking. If this is indeed true, we know that the object is to just do away with women's right to choose, period. Our guest is State Representative Diane Hart, a Democrat from Tampa. And uh, in Florida, we have passed a new law that says that most abortions will be illegal after 15 weeks of gestation. And of course, with Roe versus Wade now in effect, that that law is um, you know legally questionable. But right. if the U.S. Supreme Court does overturn Roe v. v. Wade, then it would become pretty clear cut that there, there would be no abortions in Florida after the age after 15 weeks of gestation. Um, how how would that impact Florida families? You know, it's a very very sad day when a woman does not have the right to choose what she can do with her body. This is the crazy part about all of this. This is HB5 that's supposed to go into effect July 1. If they were to reverse Roe v. Wade, immediately it will go into effect and no woman, whether you are raped, incest, or human trafficked, could have an abortion after 15 weeks. But let me just tell you what's really important here. They're not calling this an abortion bill. They're calling it reducing fetal and infant mortality. So you're not just coming out and saying, hey, we're gonna do away with your right to abort a baby should you cho- a fetal, and should you choose to do that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie it to tobacco and that's what they have done. But it's very, very sad that if I'm raped by somebody in my family and I choose not to carry my term, and I have to say to you, most women in 15 weeks, you're, you're just in a fog if you've been raped and especially if you've been raped by a family member of yours, you just, you don't even know where you are for at least a few months. So for them to impose this, I think is just so wrong and it's gonna turn people back. And I hate to even think about it because I had a girlfriend to die from quinine trying to abort a baby in high school. It's gonna turn people back to barbaric measures. So it's sad. Our guest is Diane Hart. She is a state representative from Tampa, a Democrat, and you're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And Representative Hart, I should tell you that I was encouraging people to call in and to weigh their opinions so that they that you can hear from, from listeners and that we can have kind of a community conversation here about what people are thinking. And so we have on the line Susan from Tampa. Hi, Susan. What would you like to say? Susan, are you there? All right, well, we'll come back to that. What okay. w- the, the Democrats in the uh, state legislative session that ended in March had brought up some, uh, some uh, bills that would make access easier or make uh, um, people's ability to get an abortion easier. But they were all, of course, they were either voted down or not heard at all in the Florida legislature. So what are some things that you think that the Florida legislature should consider when it comes to abortion rights? Well, let's just say that there was more than 25 amendments put forth, both in the House and the Senate by Democrats, and they were heard in the House. However, they were either ruled out of order or they were voted down, period. I don't know how they went in the Senate because I'm not in the Senate, but we do know that they were all voted down. You know, I just believe that we as just people, whether it's red or blue, 
we must allow our constituents to make their own choices. And we're taking that away from people. If your baby is not going to be born dead, then because several doctors have to weigh in, how do you certify, how does the doctor certify his opinion? That was one of the questions we had. Nobody could ever tell us. Then, so you're asking the doctor to certify something that he doesn't know. He, doesn't, he only knows what I tell him when my last period was. How would he certify that? He cannot. So there, there's so many questions in this bill that you're asking physicians to step forth and sign their names to that they cannot certify, but they're going to have to. And they're gonna to have to say, a woman must see two physicians and they both have to decide that this in fetal mortality, that the baby's going to be something wrong with it, severely retarded or born dead. They can't really do that, but they're being required to do that. So, you know, the thing that we are trying, and I can tell you as long as we're in the minority party, we will not be able to make any changes to this abortion bill, they're calling it. <laughs> Like I told you, fetal, reducing fetal and infant mortality bill is what the bill is called. That's HB5. We can't make any changes to it because we don't have the numbers to be able to do that. But constituents can weigh in with their legislators and just bombard them with the information that they think is important to them. That's the only thing we can really do is ask the people of Florida to please weigh in and hopefully they will listen. But there's nothing we can do about it, Sean. I wish there was. Our guest is Florida Representative Diane Hart, a Democrat from Tampa. And we're talking about the revelations that the U.S. Supreme Court is appears ready to be overturning Roe versus Wade. We got a document that seems to be leaked from the court that was published by Politico last night, written by Samuel Alito, that says that Roe was, was uh, improperly decided by the court and has to be overturned. And right. they are likely to make their uh, official decision the next couple of months. So, Representative Hart, you mentioned that the Florida legislature is dominated by Republicans. That's certainly true. Uh, the Florida has right now has a governor that's a Republican, but there are Democrats who are running to be governor of Florida. It certainly right. looks like a long shot right now. If I am, uh, if if I can be so bold as to say right. that, but there are Democrats that are running to unseat. Ron DeSantis, one of them, Congress member Charlie Crist, who's running as a Democrat to be governor of Florida again, this is what he wrote about the revelations that Politico revealed. Crist said, if true, the fight for a woman's right to choose will be left up to each state to decide and front and center in this fall's election. We must defeat Governor Ron DeSantis. The issue is personal to so many of us. Chris goes on to write or to say, early in my career, I was faced with the decision to protect a woman's right to choose. I stopped a bill in the state Senate that would have required a 24 hour waiting period. As your governor, I vetoed an anti abortion bill and I'll be there to do it again if need be, because I will always stand with women. And I guess the, the interesting point there to point out is that all these things that Chris was talking about, he, he did when he was a Republican. Right. So he's always kind of had this um, middle of the road, maybe political um, bent. Now he's running as a Democrat to, uh, to replace Governor Ron DeSantis. Um, what would you say, even if the legislature stays Republican, what would be the importance of having a Democrat or, or another party in the governor's mansion in the fall? I would say to you, yes, it appears that maybe it was a long shot, but so was Andrew Andrew, when he ran a long shot and he was 30,000 votes away from being the governor. So I truly believe that Ron DeSantis can be defeated. I believe that Charlie Chris will unseat Ron DeSantis. Listen, there are so many bills that passed that only a governor could veto them. And we need a democratic governor who stands with the people. I mean, there are some things that my colleagues put through that were good things that help people. Like our tax package was a good tax package first time in my four years in the legislature. But the fact remains that we have voting rights standing at the forefront. In addition to our abortion, we also have uh, same-sex marriage standing at the front line. These are things that a democratic governor would never have allowed to move forward. We know that. And even though Charlie was a former Republican, he showed you as a Republican governor, he would not allow it. So I'm certain 
that he would never allow these things to pass as a Democrat. We gotta change this governor. If we don't, we are facing some very, very terrible, terrible uphill battles as we wait for a Supreme Court <laughs> that we see today that's going against the will of so many people. So I guess it's super important. Our guest is Diane Hart, a Democratic Florida State Representative from Tampa. And we we have Chris, we, I'm sorry, we have uh, from Crystal Beach, we have Gail on the line and she wants to weigh in on this issue. Hi, Gail. What a shame. I'm, I'm in tears. I went through abortions in the 70s, gave up a child in the 80s. And women's rights and people's rights mean nothing to the Republican Party. It's, it, it's unconscionable. They're saying that most states are passing laws that if a woman goes to another state to have an abortion, they can be prosecuted by the paternal family. I mean, what is wrong? Everything is turning back. This is not the country that I grew up in. All right. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate you weighing in with your firsthand account. And I'd like to turn it to um, our my guest, Representative Diane Hart, a Democrat from Flor Florida State Representative uh, from Tampa. Diane, your response to Gail or to uh, any of these other people who have these concerns? My heart bleeds for all women today. You know, I myself, I've never had an abortion. However, I've had friends that have. I had my girlfriend, I told you in high school, who tried to have self-abort a baby who died. So for me, not for women not to have the ability to make that choice, I don't know if people understand that giving up a baby, whether through adoption or an abortion, is not an easy feat. And what we're saying here in Florida is, oh, you can do it, but it better be before those 15 weeks, even if you're raped, human trafficked, or it's incest, and it can't be for your psychological reasons. It's got to be because your body, there's something happening inside of your body that will not allow it. So for me, Gail, my heart bleeds for you. I, I, I know it was never an easy feat. It's never easy to make a decision, even when you know your baby has some terminal issue. It's never easy. And I believe that the Republicans need to take their hands off the bodies of women and let and allow women to choose their own course of life. That's between you, your God, and your family, and it should be nobody else. Not us as elected officials. No, it should not be us. Representative Hart, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe today. Thank you so much for allowing me to come on. You know, this really touches my heart because I know that there are going to be women that will be turned back and black and brown women will suffer at a far greater rate because you don't have money to travel outside of your state to get yourself an abortion should you need it. So this is a sad day for this entire country. So thank you so much. Thank you. Representative Diane Hart is a Democratic Florida State Representative from Tampa. Thanks to John Dunn for answering phones today. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. This show is every Tuesday morning at 10. Next Tuesday, my guest will be an author who will talk about fossil fuel pipelines and global politics. And we'll also hear how you can apply for federal funds if you're a renter or a homeowner. If you like the programming on 88.5 FM, remember we're commercial free because of listeners like you. Please consider making a donation at WMNF.org. In this time slot tomorrow, Shelly will host Midpoint. Coming up next, we have Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberker. They're going to talk about ovarian cancer with survivors Carrie Kreisman and Carla Jimenez. That's coming up after NPR News headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening to Tuesday Cafe.